Today, we are here to celebrate science, the transformative power of science in Africa. We are here today to celebrate the contributions of Africa to global science. And we are here to celebrate the achievement of some of Africa's brightest minds and scientific minds. We are here in a time where our world faces great challenges. But challenges are always mean opportunities as well. And the next three days very much are a great opportunity. This is the largest scientific gathering ever held in Africa. The next Einstein must embody both the humanity and wisdom of Mandela, possibly the greatest leader of the 20th century, as well as Einstein. It's good to all agree here that we need to build technical skills, uh, you know, you know socio-emotional skills, but we need to start with the basics. Our kids need to be learning when they are in class. The learning crisis needs to be addressed if we are to generate the next Einstein in Africa. We need our schools to be teaching. We need our kids to be learning. We can't afford to just sit back, whether it's industry, whether it's supposed to say, well, let's see who comes through and then we'll just work with that. We are invested and we should be more invested in looking at new kinds of partnerships that are invested in really finding and nurturing these hidden talents that are, that are often stifled. And just to mention that we really, and, 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 and I really like the tone of this session because it's really around the solution space. Until we have equal opportunities for education, equal opportunities for career advancement, equal opportunities for leadership positions, and equal pay, we will never bridge the gap. So those are important things. If you look at some of our grand challenges that we have in healthcare, you can imagine a doctor, for example, taking a picture and uploading it to the cloud so that he can collaborate across with you know, doctors, the world so, with yeah. many doctors. Or a healthcare worker that has a question, you know, she's going to community, she can actually, you know, upskill herself or, you know, ask questions. Before I'm a scientist, I'm a humanitarian. So the field that I'm pursuing, which is nanotechnology, I'm using nanoparticles for uh, delivery of drugs, especially in cancers and Alzheimer's. And um, the, the results from my research were very promising on the pharmacological level in animals. And we actually tested these nanoparticles clinically in some of the dermatological diseases, in basal cell carcinoma, in psoriasis, in skin fungal infections. And the results are just amazing. You can minimize the dose of the drug as to like 20 times less dose, and you can achieve even better efficacy than the chemical drugs without any side effects. In my research, I saw something unexpected. So if you have the freedom to ask questions, this is very important for a scientist. And I know exactly the time when I just found this Quantum Hall effect. It was two o'clock in the morning. I was working in a laboratory. I'm an experimentalist. And I saw something. And then within 10 minutes or so, I saw something which was new. To have the freedom to follow then a new direction this was very important for me. We need to build on the good initiatives underway to create more productive linkages between the African research and innovation community, both in the universities and startup farms. The future we want is 
as bright as we want it. <laughs>